Hey there, and welcome to episode 4 of our continuing series on Live 9's Mono Sequencer. Today we're going to use Mono Sequencer to generate a guitar arpeggio that follows a chord progression. First, let's take a look at how the file is set up. We have three tracks generating noise. This shaker track is simply playing an audio loop. The first track with mono sequencer on it is the bass track, and the parameters here are fairly simple. The pitches are all set to a G, so it's going to play a fifth above whatever transpose value gets sent to it, and mono sequencer is producing a simple rhythmic pattern. And the MIDI input is set to transpose. Finally, the guitar track is generating our arpeggio. The MIDI input menu is also set to transpose. Let's go ahead and set the pitches for this. The first pitch is going to be C, and then F, and then B flat, and then finally D. Okay, so that renders our arpeggio. This track is sounding a little lifeless, so let's add a velocity contour. This doesn't have to be precise, just draw in a wavy line. We'll do the same thing for duration, so some notes will be longer than others. Again, with the wavy line gesture. So that makes the track breathe a little bit. Now that we've done that, let's shift our attention to the chord progression track. Here we find a third mono sequencer sending MIDI notes to transpose the other mono sequencers. We could do the same thing by following one mono sequencer with another on the same track, but we want to transpose two tracks at the same time, so we set up our chord progression on zone track. So what this is going to do is send its output as a transpose value to the bass and guitar sequencers. The MIDI from menu is set to chord progression. The reason it says chord progression is because that is the name of the track. I could rename it chords, and you can see this change reflected in the MIDI from menus. So all the sequencer is doing is sending notes to the other mono sequencers. The pulse value here is set to whole notes, so our harmonic movement will step every measure. So let's set up our chord progression. The first value I'll set to G, then C, then up to F, and then down to B flat. After listening to this track, I like the guitar track the way I'm hearing it, but I just like all the notes to sustain a bit longer. I'm already looking at the duration tab, so I'm just going to use this up button to increase the duration of all the notes while maintaining the contour I've designed. And that's all there is to it. Be sure to check out episode 5 where we're going to have fun with the repeat lane.